Hi, my name is Mick Child, Director of Forge Photography, and today we're going to talk about the manual setting on your camera and the exposure triangle. Hi, and welcome to what is the last in the series of photography tutorials which I've made for the Rushmore and St Andrews Alliance Photography Club. Hopefully you've enjoyed them. Today is really a culmination of all the, that you've learnt over the last seven tutorials. And after today, when we've been through the exposure triangle, you should be confident enough to be able to switch to manual and actually work those settings out for yourself. Through trial and error, I would suggest to start with, um, but certainly using the principles of the exposure triangle. I thought I'd sit here today because this apple tree behind me, I can't believe how nice that's looking at the moment with all the blossom. We've got a, a few trees around the garden that have been in blossom. Um, most of them have now had the blossom blown away, but this one's still really, really nice. Okay, so the exposure triangle then, here it is. Um, when we're looking at the exposure triangle, what we're looking at is three elements that your manual function on your camera controls. And they are the shutter speed, which you've already had to think about with using TV or S on your camera, which is the shutter priority where you set the shutter speed. You've got the AV or A setting, which is your aperture priority, where you can set the size of the hole in your lens. That obviously allows more light in or less light in. And that, as we've learned, affects the depth of field that you get in your image. And then the final thing that we did in the last two episodes is ISO. ISO is the amount of power that we put down onto your sensor to affect the sensitivity of the sensor. ISO speed 100 is where really we're not putting an awful lot of power down onto the sensor at all. Um, therefore, we're not giving much assistance to the camera. And in that case, you get a much less grainy image. Whereas if we lift the ISO speed somewhere up to say 3200, then you'll start to see grain introducing into your picture but of course you can still get a nice image so when you switch into manual let's have a think about what you're going to control then you're going to control that shutter speed so one of your dials on your camera is going to uh, to adjust the shutter speed you're going to be able to adjust the aperture so one of the buttons on your camera is going to adjust the aperture and then of course you're going to adjust your iso to get the iso speed or the sensitivity on your sensor just right for the two settings that you've got for shutter speed and aperture. So what's with this exposure triangle then? So what we've got, we've got shutter speed, we've got aperture and we've got ISO, the three things when we're shooting in manual that we really need to think about. Where we normally start is that we start with the aperture. We set the aperture for the depth of field that we really want. If you're shooting in low light, then you're probably going to have a wide aperture and, um, and you'll, you'll live with the fact that you're going to have a shallow depth of field maybe because uh, otherwise you'd need to bring in additional lighting or you're going to have to have slow shutter speeds, which might be okay. They might be okay for what you're doing. So let's have a look then. So if we slide, if we set, let's set an aperture of say 5.6. So we've got an aperture of 5.6, which is a fairly wide hole in your lens. Let's set an ISO of, let's say, 800, okay? And then let's have a little play with the shutter. Now, if we move the shutter up and down, you can see the faster we set the shutter speed, the darker it goes, and then the slower we set the shutter speed, the lighter it goes. Okay, so let's set the shutter speed somewhere in the middle. Let's, let's try 1 to 50th of a second, okay? Now let's move the aperture open and closed, okay? So you can see as we open the aperture, in other words, we have a lower f-stop number. There we are, f2.8 for instance, we get a brighter picture. And then if we take it the other way and we narrow the aperture, remember narrowing the aperture gives you a longer depth of field. Look, it gets darker, you see, okay? Now what we could do is, let's say that we wanted this aperture setting here of f-stop 16, what we could do if the shutter speed that we want is say, let's adjust that to one one hundredth of a second and it's still too dark, we could lift this from ISO speed 800, say to ISO speed 2000. Let's have a look, let's move it up and down. You see how it gets brighter and darker. And these, these are the compensations that you're making in full manual mode. Now what a lot of people have on the cameras is a light meter. A lot of the, the sort of higher end cameras will have light meters on them. And the light meters are 
pretty good to be honest with you. I, I use the light meter a lot. Um, I'm a little bit lazy. I should carry really um, a, a separate light meter with me everywhere I go and I, I, I don't, I should do. But the light meters are okay. They give you a, a good feel for where you are. So when you see me set my camera up, what I'm actually doing is I'm setting an aperture and then I'm setting an ISO speed. And then what I'm doing, I'm having a look to see whereabouts on the scale on my camera, on my light meter, I need to set my shutter speed. And if my shutter speed's less than one one hundredth of a second, for in instance, we, we set that as our, as our base level, didn't we? Um, what I'll do is I'll lift the ISO slightly just to, just to compensate so that I get a faster shutter speed or so that I can have a faster shutter speed. Okay, well, I'm going to take a shot of these trees now just to demonstrate what I mean. It, I'm, I'm in shadow at the moment, um, but the tree, as you saw, was behind me is, uh, is, is quite bright. So what I've done, I'm in full manual mode. I've got uh, a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. I've got an f-stop of 9, so I'm narrowing up the aperture quite a bit. But I've got an ISO of 200, and the reason for that is that it's actually a very, very bright and nice day, isn't it? So let's take a, a shot of the apple tree. And the lovely blossom on it. That's lovely. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my histogram. Now, when I was looking through the viewfinder, you'd probably say I didn't just guess that. I actually set it up before I came on camera. Um, so I knew that that was the right setting for the shot that I was going to take. But what I did, I double checked it on the back um, on, on what's called a histogram, which is a graphical representation of the tonal values across the image. The, the scale goes from the blacks on the left here to the whites on the right. And because the image is made up of a lot of white with a quite bright background, we'd expect to see a lot more information over on the right hand side here. If we have a look at another image, you see I'm getting lots and lots of whites on the right hand side here. And what we try to do generally, unless we're getting really arty, is that we try to keep the lights and darks within the sort of within the scale of the graph. We don't like to clip off either end otherwise we start to either overexpose or un underexpose the the image i'm not too unhappy with this because i've shot in what we call raw and from a raw image we will talk about raw images uh, at a later date i can recover quite a lot of the detail in fact i can recover all of the detail um, with this photo as it is here so i'm quite pleased with that so get out there, give it a go, Look, do lots of practice in AV, lots of practice in shutter priority as well in TV or S. It's the only way you're going to learn and, and, and try with those ISO settings pushing it up and down. The semi-manual modes AV for aperture priority or A and TV or S for shutter priority are perfectly adequate to getting a really, really nice shot. And, and, and you might be a photographer that likes a certain depth of field or you might be a photographer that likes a certain feel to the shutter speed you know there might be a shutter speed that you feel comfortable in shooting at um, so let the camera you know in the semi-manual mode work everything else out for you you may as well and after all if you're out and suddenly you see something you want to take a photo of if you're in full manual mode you've got to kind of work out what the aperture is going to be what the shutter speed is going to be you know it's going to take your time you might miss the shot completely so what I would always say to you, especially while you're learning, is always have it in a semi-manual mode and, and don't, whatever you do, feel pressured for this, this manual, manual mode. You know, yes, it's nice to be um, technically competent with a, with a camera, but that comes, that comes later. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed all of these episodes that we've put together. Eight in total, I do believe it is now, um, where we've really been on something of a journey to have a look at uh, aperture priority, shutter priority, and of course today we've looked at the exposure triangle and, and how you can shoot in full manual, although we've only really brushed the surface with all of these things. Um, so I look forward to uh, to lockdown being finished, as I'm sure you do. What we're going to do is we, we're, we're probably going to put together some 60 second to two minute videos, just one off videos as we get time to do them that show you around the camera, show your techniques, but obviously don't take up too much of your time and not too much of our time either, because we've got an awful lot of work that we need to start getting on with now. But for the meantime, I hope you've really enjoyed kind of what we've shared with you i hope it's been useful and i hope like i say when we get back to school if it's still summer then hopefully we can get that minibus booked out we can get out into the outside and get some really really nice photos so let's see how it goes for now though stay safe stay home and we'll catch up with you very soon